Good morning, friends. It is Monday, June the 8th, 2020, and this is the daily devotional for Davidson College Presbyterian Church. One of the readings for today is the first psalm, and in that psalm, the author lays out what life is really all about, the choice between two paths. He talks about the image of a tree. I'm standing in front of a tree. Listen to these words. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on His law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season. Friends, I was thinking about what it means to be a tree standing tall, what it means to be a tree bearing good fruit in the world, what it means to be like this tree that's living by the Word of God and living out what that Word teaches us, to love God and to love our neighbor. One of our friends from years ago here at DCPC was a Davidson College student, also a Bonner Scholar that worked in our preschool. His name is Xavier Killings. He's now studying medicine in Charleston. And I want to read a recent post that he placed on Facebook. Listen to these words. I feel as though I'm losing a balancing act that many don't think or won't acknowledge exists. And I know that I'm not the only one. So I write to encourage those balancing existence, balancing oppression, balancing guilt, balancing apathy, balancing ignorance, balancing exhaustion, balancing loss, to know that you are not alone in this endeavor. It's hard to just exist in a society that seems so antagonistic to your very being, but here I am. It's daunting to think that your life can be stolen away from you at no fault of your own, but we can't live our lives in crippling fear. As a man, as a black man, I used to think that showing emotion was a sign of weakness. Never let them see you cry. Never let them know that you feel. I'm hesitant to express my feelings. I feel as though my voice doesn't matter and wonder what, who actually cares to hear what I have to say. But my voice does matter and my black life does matter. If no one else tells you, I want to tell you that your life matters. In this time of sadness and reflection, I return once again to a valuable lesson. I learned it while traveling internationally, that strength can be found in vulnerability. So I'm opening myself up to you, opening a window into my vulnerability in hopes that you too may find strength. These past few weeks, might I say past few years, have been an emotional roller coaster. Imagine coming to the realization that your body, a beautiful, innocent black body, is under constant jeopardy. Not knowing if you can go to church without being murdered. Not knowing if you can play outside with toys without being murdered. Not knowing if you can rest in the comfort of your own home without being murdered. Not knowing if you can walk home without being murdered. Not knowing if there are countless other things you can do without being murdered. Not knowing. I find myself feeling guilty for not being able to watch the George Floyd or Ahmaud Arbery murders because that reality hits too close to home. I used to find joy in running through downtown Charleston, but now those runs are laced with fear and anxiety of being the next victim of senseless violence. Thoughts of how my black body will be perceived and acted against permeate my mind. Black men are too often stereotyped and perceived as inferior, incompetent, violent, and aggressive, but that's not really who we are. That's not the reality I know. We're compassionate, understanding, we're loving, but most of all, we are resilient. The anxiety of knowing that my black body is under constant threat is overwhelming, and sometimes I just sit and cry. I find it fascinatingly terrifying that a few weeks ago the world was essentially under lockdown because of a novel viral pandemic. I find it terrifying that this viral pandemic is killing minorities at a disproportionately high rate. I find it terrifying that some are acting as if the virus decided to up and leave and are living their lives while risking the harm of others, all because they're tired of quarantine. I'm tired too. I'm tired of turning on the news to see that our leadership is in fact not leading this ship but instead adding gasoline to the fire. I find it terrifying that on top of oppression, racism, microaggressions, and police violence, minorities are still leading the charge for justice and equality. 
Imagine that. The very people being terrorized, the very people being murdered are the ones expected to stand up and lead the fight against their perpetrators, not those on the sidelines observing who have access or influence or resources or privilege, mind you. We all have privilege in some form or another to make a difference and to make a positive change. I encourage you to be uncomfortable. I encourage you to have difficult conversations. I encourage you to meet opposition and challenge with courage and humility. I encourage you to be intentional. I encourage you to check on your black and brown friends, neighbors, co-workers, but understand that they shouldn't be required to bear the burden and carry it too. Understand that they may be tired, they may be exhausted, they may be emotionally drained. They may not want to talk about what's going on, what has been going on for 400 years. To those who sit mute while the world burns, your silence is deafening. To those who exist silently in the comfort of your own skin, we see you. To those who are compliant with violence committed against your fellow man, your inaction is murder. To those who don't see what the problem is, you are the problem. To those who aren't affected by what's going on, you're delusional because the very essence of humanity is affected. To those who post only because it's the popular thing to do, your guilt will not sustain you and I implore you to channel that guilt into purpose. If you've made it this far, I appreciate your time and willingness to hear me out. Now embrace your privilege, use your platform, use the God-given talents that, you've, that you have to advocate and fight for those less fortunate than you. Educate yourself on what's going on. Educate your family, your peers, your co-workers. Get involved. Vote against the corrupt systems that benefit to keep us oppressed. Act as though your life depends on it because ours does. We need you to stand and fight with us because you matter, but more importantly, we matter. Friends, we do matter, and black lives matter. So let's stand tall like this tree behind me and bear good fruit for justice and peace and love. Let's stand so that all might stand and experience the goodness and grace of God in this life that we've been given. We are all created in the image of God. Let's go out and share that good news in love. Will you pray with me? God of grace, strengthen us this day to do your will. Help us to stand tall like the tree planted by streams of water, bearing good fruit in its season. May the fruit that we bear today be fruit of justice and peace and loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen, amen. Go in peace.